do you think um, ISIS has actually hijacked Islam and its identity? I think what is happening is that uh, what ISIS is doing seems to have taken the limelight, not to say that the rest of Islam is not doing good work. Uh, if we were to focus on the good, it would actually eclipse uh, the bad that's being done by ISIS. Uh, but I feel, uh, you know, news channels obviously would carry uh, the bad that's being done because the good is so much. So, uh, yes, it is to a certain extent that ISIS has more or less uh, overtaken that image of Islam, perhaps, that the non-Muslims have. Uh, and this is what makes our duty uh, even much more important of spreading the true image of Islam or the true message of Islam. How do you think the situation with ISIS will pan out? Because there are some sectors who feel that they're actually very Islamic. I think to say they're very Islamic is, uh, is wrong. Because if you take a look at the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and even the true Khalifats that followed, uh, the non-Muslims felt very safe under them. In fact, uh, history proves this. If you were to go back to the, even the Turkish Empire, the Ottoman Empire, uh, the Jews who lived under the Ottomans and uh, the Christians who lived under the Ottomans and that's very recent but if you take it further to the Umayyad period as well as the Abbasid period uh, those who were non-Muslim felt very secure and very safe under the Muslims the first thing is uh, what ISIS is doing is they, they, they're picking anyone who disagrees with them not necessarily not Muslim so even if you're a Muslim but you've disagreed with them they kill you and that is ridiculous that is the first point of loss for ISIS and it, it's the first point of exposure of who they really are. They have, you know, gone against the instruction of the Almighty where uh, in the Quran Allah says that if you are to kill one person, it's as though you're killing entire humanity off. So I, I believe that, you know, the killing of the Zaydis or the killing of uh, anyone else that has happened uh, over time, the, the, the Japanese hostages, uh, the killing of, for example, the journalists, uh, the killing of Muslims uh, who belong perhaps to a different denomination, uh, and even just those of uh, similar ideologies perhaps, but who don't agree with you. Because if you're following it carefully, you have uh, the different factions of uh, those fighting Assad, for example, in Syria, uh, who are killing each other. They're all Muslim and they all perhaps have uh, similar beliefs. So it goes to show that there is something deeper than religion. Uh, it, is, it is something that is really uh, terrible because religion is being used. People are saying these guys might be following exactly what the Prophet Muhammad taught, but that's not true. If you take a look at uh, the Quran, there are verses that were revealed at times of war and verses that were revealed at times of peace. So to implement the verses of war, many conditions need to be met from amongst those conditions is that there needs to be a war and there needs to be uh, a certain system in place where there is a supreme leader. I was having a laugh a few days ago because someone asked me uh, that if Mullah Omar was the Khalifa, who uprooted him, who upseated him, how come there's a new Khalifa? I mean, what happened? Was there a handover of baton or something? And where did it go? And, and, and that's true that those people who considered him as the Khalifa to Muslimin, you know, the Khalifa of the Muslims, how did they suddenly go to an anonymous man called Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi? And when I say anonymous, I'm talking of uh, the fact that the media told us who he was. We, we had no clue, no idea who he was before the media, just like Osama bin Laden. Uh, nobody had a clue who he was besides a closed circle and when the when the media suddenly told the world this is the man that's when we knew who he was so it's quite surprising to say that you know people feel this is islamic when in actual fact it isn't islamic and like i've said the biggest factor that sells them or that gives them away is the fact that they they're interested in sporadic killings destruction of infrastructure which is prohibited in islam the Prophet, peace be upon him, says even at times of war, you don't break a tree, you don't destroy buildings, you don't kill women and children, you don't kill the aged and the elderly. They're going against every teaching. And this is why uh, it's very frustrating. And this is what the young people don't understand. And perhaps uh, what they, and I'm going to take the liberty to speak on this, uh, what uh, perhaps the uh, young people who are being brainwashed feel is, okay, 
uh, the, the Westerners kill us and our children and they're killing our women and they're doing everything so we're allowed to do to them tit for tat, you know, exactly what they're doing to us. So we can go and do whatever uh, they're doing to us. The reality is you cannot go out and kill innocent people who are not involved at all in the war. You know, I take for example uh, the Al-Shabaab uh, killings in Kenya. They have a problem with the Kenyan army for some reason. So because they are too coward to face the Kenyan army, what they do is they go into Kenya and start killing innocent people who perhaps are Muslims. Perhaps they were really good people who've helped Islam and the Muslims, but they killed. And, and if that was the way that Islam had taught, you and I would not be seated here because perhaps our forefathers somewhere up the ladder who, who reverted to Islam or converted to Islam would have been killed by the likes of ISIS.